Hello everyone and good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hope you're enjoying our last week before October comes. <laughs> I guess so. So welcome, welcome. My name is Alex Cooper. I teach the computer classes at the Columbia County Library in Evans, the Harlem Library, Uchi Creek, now the Grovetown Library. Yay, we got a new library. Yay. <laughs> and our class today is Photography Fundamentals and Cloud Backup. This is kind of part of a series of classes that we have going on. Um, all our other previous classes, which I'll talk in the, on in a little bit, is available on our YouTube channel. So welcome, welcome. Uh, don't forget to post your questions into the chat. And kind of introduce yourself and stuff if you want to, to say hello, hello. And the biggest question I usually ask is, how can I help? Okay, so you've come to class, even if this is a replay that you're watching. It's right now I'm recording this live, but you may be watching this in a replay. How can I help? What questions do you have? So if you attend one of our live classes, of course, I'm happy to answer any questions you do have <laughs> in the live part. Um, so there we go right there. All right, well, everybody's come, all, everyone's coming into the classroom and everything. I'll go ahead and talk about some of the other classes that we've had previously and some classes we've had, we're going to have for the rest of the month as well. So on Tuesday, uh, yesterday, we did Photography Basics. That class is still up and available. We talked about what's a megapixel. We talked about Photography Basics, like composition, the rule of thirds, and tricks for better photography with your photos. And this morning we did a gadget help, which is kind of a drop in. Uh, one of the things we did talk about, of course, is our new Libby um, system that's going to come on October 1st for our audio books at our libraries. So do realize that's on the way. RB Digital is moving. Um, it's it's e-audiobooks e e and e-books to the new Libby app and if you're using RB Digital that's what that is if it pops up and talks about it and I believe next week we're going to do a class uh, that will discuss Libby and kind of get us ready to switch over to the new system tomorrow morning we're going to be doing chess uh, 101 with the Grotown library of course it'll be available here on our YouTube channel and then tomorrow afternoon, we're going to be doing advanced photo editing and layers. Okay. The cool part about this class is it's kind of an update to the classes. Excuse me. It's an update to one of the classes we've had in the past. And one of the th neat things is if you do want to follow along with that, go ahead and download the GIMP from GIMP.org. Um, it's a free Photoshop-like editing software. So we're going to be using free stuff. And I'll also will include and paste the the um, uh, the file so you can follow along with me as we do in our editing and everything and also putting our, our something together making a composition with our layers okay I'll disappear so I'm not blocking anything so this lists all the classes that we've done for the month all these classes are still available up and still available on our YouTube channel uh, so you can go back and watch them uh, the thing that we have coming up as well as next week is we actually have photography, printing, and virtual scrapbooking. So our virtual scrapbooking has been moved from our photo editing to now being in its own class. Okay, that'll be on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, we're going to be doing cutting the cable cord basics on the, in the morning at 11 o'clock. One of the neat things we'll be talking about that is we'll talk, be talking about Peacock. Uh, some of the new things that are out there and also kind of let everybody know about some of the new um, apps that are out there that are free like Pluto TV and stuff and also just found out uh, basically yesterday that uh, the Peacock from Comcast and everything will be available on our Roku devices so either that will become available um, soon or it already is available and you'll actually be able to use that view that free content on there as well also on the 30th we'll be doing the afternoon we'll be creating videos and editing basics and tomorrow we'll also include a new calendar we're actually going to be doing a Raspberry Pi 
and Computer Projects Live with Alex on the first in the morning. That's me. In the afternoon, we're going to be doing library resources and apps class. That will include the new Libby uh, system. So that's what we'll be talking about on October 1st. So come join us for that. Our libraries are open with limited services and hours. Um, you, curbside holds pickup is available. You can go to gchrl.org for details. Of course, you can call in the library with questions Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. There's no in-house uh, classes or anything like that and no study room availability. So one of the good things is we have, of course, we're doing all our classes here virtually. So and that'll be we'll be <laughs> we'll be doing that in the future uh, one day. Uh, don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. One of the things we're trying to do is we're trying to reach 100 subscribers to our YouTube channels and then we can actually get our own YouTube address. But until then, an easy way to find our YouTube channel is to search YouTube for GCHRL videos and it'll pop right up. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's get to our topic this afternoon and I'll come back. Yay, I'm back. Hey, did you miss me? <laughs> I'm back. Photography fundamentals and cloud backup. So let's go ahead and let's do our pull our hand out for the pull our hand out up for that. <laughs> so kind of the goal with this is and let me post that I'll post that into the into the chat. So give me just a second to upload that and post it. All right, so share. Okay, so here's a link to our handout. So you can view that as well. Okay, so we're going to talk about photography fundamentals and cloud backup. So yesterday, of course, we talked about um, megapixels, uh, taking better pictures, using the rule of thirds, all that kind of good stuff, learning how to use our camera. And today we're going to talk about getting our pictures off our camera and dealing with our photos. Okay, now what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be using our free program that comes with Windows 10. Many people may not know it actually is uh, free and it comes with Windows 10 and I will tell you this too. Make sure if you're if anything that I'm um, doing basically doesn't uh, equal the same thing as your uh, version of photos. Do you realize this is an app that is constantly updated? So make sure your Windows is up to date um, because even even I'll probably pull it up and see that they've changed something. Um, but yeah, the, this is an app that Windows update automatically will update and change. So do realize that to, to be equal with us, just make sure your Windows is uh, Windows 10 is updated. If that makes any sense. So if something strange, make sure your Windows is update um, updated and then it should be the equal. Okay. So we're going to talk about what we need. Okay. To get our pictures off of our camera, off of our phone and everything. And then we're going to talk about organizing them. And then we'll talk about getting around the Windows 10 Photos app. Okay. We'll talk about importing our pictures, starting a slideshow, and creating an album. Doing some light editing to our photos. We'll go as far as we can with this app. A lot of folks, this is maybe all that they really want to do. Just maybe put a little bit of a filter on there. Maybe crop the picture or something. And then we'll also talk about sharing and emailing photos. We'll talk about printing. And then we'll talk about uploading our photos to Google Photos, um, web apps, um, albums, and then sharing them. 
Okay, this includes videos as well. So we'll also be talking about the Google uh, app and also a great way to snap old pictures. So if you have some old pictures, maybe in a box in the garage somewhere, um, try to come in, bring it in. And I've got a neat little video that explains how to use that. We'll be using the Google free Google app to be able to do that too. We'll talk about some recommended software and kind of get you ready for tomorrow. Okay. So before we get started, does anybody have any questions? <laughs> any, any questions? Okay. So give me one second. Let me grab my camera real quick. That I had to go grab it. <laughs> Thought it was in this room and it wasn't. Okay, so first thing we're kind of talking about, of course, is having our camera and wanting to get the pictures off our camera and getting them onto the computer. Okay, now of course we'll be talking about the Google Photos app as well with our cameras, and of course that's taking a picture from this, but you still may want to make your own backup. And transfer pictures from your camera to your um, computer device as well but I'm going to talk about what we need and I'll disappear for a minute let's talk about what we need is our digital camera of course you need the flash drive out of the camera that has the excuse me the SD card out of the camera that has the pictures on it or if you have pictures on a USB this will work the same way when we import now you can plug in using something like a, a USB plug, my, a micro USB, a mini USB, or of course if your device uses a lightning cable as well. Now if your computer doesn't have uh, a slot for an SD card, you may have to get a little converter. Um, or if you have something, or if your computer, or if you're trying to take pictures off of like a, um, a uh, excuse me, a micro SD card, uh, then you can get something that's like a little caddy. This is an interesting little caddy to me. A little caddy that you put the micro SD card in, and then it turns it into a USB. So then all you do is you just put that into your computer into the USB port. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and of course make sure that you have the Windows Photo app. So let's go ahead and get started with Windows uh, Photos app. The easiest way to find the Windows Photos app is to basically go down here and then go in search and just type photos. The app will pop up, left click it, and then the Windows Photos app will pop up just like that. Okay. All right, so let's talk about getting around our Windows Photos app. So a big thing is, and uh, if, if you're looking for it the other way, you hit start, and then basically you scroll down, and it'll be listed under um, photos. It'll be just, just the photos icon, okay? Now in a future class, which is the one that we're doing on, I believe the 30th, the video editor, I'll briefly talk about that, but I won't go into that as much because now it's getting its own class. If you keep scrolling down, then under, oh, I passed it, then under V, you'll see a video editor, okay? That's still the same thing, and like I said, when we pull it up, we're actually going to be pulling up, and I'll show that off a little bit, but we won't, just go, we won't go into as much depth in that. 
I would recommend you go if you want more about the video editing part to the, the video creating class. All right, so let's talk about getting around our Windows 10 Photos app. The Photos app is free. It's already installed in Windows 10. Like I said, you may need to make sure that your Windows 10 is updated. If you're not seeing the newest version or what I'm gonna be showing today, because I know my computer has the latest version of Windows 10, the, the 2004 version which is the one that just came out. Um, not only can it organize photos, but can order nice videos as well. And let's look and see what we have. One of the biggest things is by default, it's set up for the pictures folder to organize it based on date. This is a big one. You always want to make sure that when you're taking pictures with your camera that you do have it um, organize that your camera does have the right date on it. I at one point had a, um, it's not this iPhone that I have, but a previous one. The interesting thing is it actually uh, was saving pictures and it, it messed up on the date and that got kind of crazy. Also, one of the things is you always want to make sure that if your camera battery does die, if you do have one of those cameras, that anytime you have to reset the, the time and date, make sure that you do do that when you put in new batteries, okay? So the first thing we see is kind of the collections area, okay? This collections area organized by date with the most recent shots at the top. To see your photos and videos organized in the album or folders, select albums or folders, which we'll talk about more in just a second. Um, the big thing about the collections, of course, is you can just keep scrolling and scrolling and anything that you put in the pictures folder you can add more folders than that if you had an external hard drive and you wanted to see all the pictures on that. But even if things are in subfolders, it still shows them all in the collection as long as you choose the main folder. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's talk about import. And I'll pull it back up. So I can scroll down here. You'll see date and time over here and stuff. Okay. And if I wanted to keep scrolling down, I could go back and see all the dates and all my pictures had been organized. Now, when I look up here, we'll see collection, album, and then folders. Now, this is our new thing where it says video project. So I'm going to go ahead and click albums. And then you can see albums that you've created. Okay. You can click on an album and it shows all the pictures. Okay. okay. Now let's go back and let's look at uh, well let's look at folders now because we're going along this line. If I click folders, then we can see what actually is being added or what folders is um, our, our photos app viewing. Okay, it will connect up to the OneDrive if you do have that service, like um, the Office 365. There's a certain amount of space that you can use. Later on, we are going to be using the Google's Photos app that does have unlimited space. Okay. Right now, it's saying that it's viewing the pictures folder. Okay. And I have a different pictures folder as well, but this is the main one that we want it to, to view. Okay. Now, let's go back to collection. And I've just got a little, few little pictures here, some golf stuff. And I'm just going to actually add these these three pictures to my a new album. Now, how do I do that? Well, all I need to really do is go up here, and we're going to say select, and then I can do check, 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 and then it'll say what do you want to do. I'm going to click add to. And it's going to say what? Do I want to add it to a previously made album? Or do I want to make a new album? I'm going to click where it says new album. 
and we'll just call it golf graphic. It's just a little picture there. Oh, hang on. So it pops up and then when we go to albums, we can click it. I spelled it wrong. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, we'll just call it graph, car graph cartoon then. Third time's a charm. So if we go down here, we can see our pictures that are listed. It also included a video that was made okay if we want to see any of our pictures bigger all we do is we left click it okay now if we go back other thing we can do is when we click albums we can click new album it'll create a new album that way as well and then it'll allow us to add things to the album why create an album well the biggest thing is you have this big long list of videos big long list of uh, pictures and everything and you don't want to keep scrolling up and down. Also, it makes it very easy to add uh, the pictures or graphics to videos and or to share them with others as well. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's look at our album that we made. Or oh, wait, 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 let me see. Uh, da, 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 da. Where, oh yeah, I'm in the import section. Okay. So let's talk about importing since we, I kind of jumped the gun there. Sorry, we started creating an album. Oh, since we're talking about albums, we'll continue that. So I basically, I start an album. I click on the album. And then I can actually go up here and click slideshow. It does have a video in there, but it'll include that. But the slideshow instantly shows us the slideshow, including videos. How to do animation and all that we'll come back to the video editing and creating class and it'll keep playing that over and over so you can reorganize the pictures if you want them to be in a different order and you can actually auto sort them in different ways to actually see them bigger if you want to see or smaller and it also is an easy way um, it'll ma automatically make like a little video here even using the, the other video that's kind of interesting it'll make uh, like a little bit of automated video if we want it to so if we go to the folder that we have labeled golf it's instantly making an automatic video you could click this or edit and it'll actually go into there and let you reorganize it there and make a video of it okay Okay, so let's talk about importing our pictures. So anytime, it doesn't matter if you're on albums or collections or anything, I go up here and let's click where it says import. And we want to say click from USB device. And, oh shoot, I don't, okay. Let's see. Okay, we'll have to pretend I don't have the memory card with me. So basically what you do is you'd import, you click from USB, this is after plugging your device in, and we'll have to use our imagination, okay? Uh, one of the things that'll happen is it'll actually will pop up here, 
and you get a list of all the pictures. Now, you don't really want to, one of the, why you use an organizer versus doing like a drag and drop or something that we talk about in the basic computer class. Well, the big thing about that is you, if you are copying stuff over, then you have, may have doubles because maybe you made a new folder and you're copying it over, okay? You don't really want doubles on anything. So if you do use a, a, um, an organizer program, one of the things is you could actually go in here and then just click the ones you specifically want to make a copy of, okay? And it also has an option at the top that'll say, um, do you not want to show, I mean, do not want to download the ones that are already on the computer? And you could say yes. So if you have that setting, it actually will not set up a new, um, will not copy over full, um, ones that you already have, okay? So it helps save space on your computer and it, you know you know that you've got the files because it has it'll show you when it's done as well. That also works if you plug it into iPhone. Um, you may have to have iTunes installed on your Windows computer to be able to do that unless you're using a Mac that those drivers should already be installed in there. Okay. Okay, so we talked about importing, plug it in our device selecting it which we say USB then we hit continue the other thing is you can actually choose it to save it a uh, day or by the month um, I usually do I, I used to be one that I said set up separate folders and put everything that's from one month in one folder but now I'm actually finding out it makes it a little bit easier for me um, and because the organizer doesn't care <laughs> if it's in subfolders or not it makes it pretty easy just to kind of say put it in the day so in a, later on you could actually come back and label that folder you know went to the beach that day or something so kind of lets you zero in on what you're what you're wanting to do and clicking import now we talked about our albums a little bit didn't we already yes we did and we also talked about our slideshow now the slideshow Uh, is not viewable. Do you see this? Where the slideshow is not viewable in the main collection section. But if you go to albums and you choose an album, then we actually have our slideshow button. Okay, and you can just you just it'll play. This is with no sound or anything, and you just click to exit. Also, anytime you create an album. You can click up here, say add photo, and it'll pull up the collection you have on your computer to add more pictures to something. Okay. All right, so let's talk about editing our photo. Now, the easiest way to do it is let me choose an actual picture. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, this looks like a picture of the beach. There we go. I'll choose this one to work on. Oh no, let's get a nicer picture than that. How about that? All right, a nice sunset picture. Do you like that? All right, so basically, all we've done is we've clicked the picture and we have our different options here at the top, and we're just going to kind of walk through them. And talk about the different features. I'll disappear so I'm not blocking anything. So our first one here is we actually have our zoom. We can do our zoom level and then we can move around by doing the drag and drop if we want to. Nice sunset. Yes I took this picture. Look there's even a nice little bird in the way. So we have our zoom level. We also have our trash can, don't we? Mm -hmm. We also have our heart. I'll add that to favorite. I think that's a good looking picture. Click that and that just means that later on when we go back we can find our picture that are listed as favorite. It's kind of like a star or a like. This allows us to rotate our picture very quickly if you find out. I guess that's the sunset in Australia because it's on the 
bottom side of the world. There you go. All right, so here's your crop. If you click crop, it'll take us to this section. And then very easily, all you do is you just drag the, the sides to resize it. Now, one of the big things about the cropping is if I go over here to the, we're going to deal with the other stuff here. If I go over here to the aspect ratio and I drop it down, you may say I need it to be a certain size, a certain width. I need it to be, let's see, a square. This way, it'll make sure to resize it. Let's say you want to make this your computer background. And, oh, I love it. When I'm actually moving this around, do you notice that the, the rule of thirds uh, bar graph has actually kind of pop up to help me? If I crop it a little bit more, I might be able to get the sun in the perfect place. There we go. So actually now I have properly cropped it as a uh, rule of thirds. And we actually have our bird over here now, don't we? Okay, so that actually allows you to do that here. So you may be making something, resizing something, you wanna make sure it's the right size. And you may be even doing what I just did. I just uh, wanted, to, make, wanted to, to crop it so that it fits the perfect way and makes follows the certain rules too. We also have our rotate, we have our straight, and we also have our flip, and we also have our reset right here. So one thing that's really great is all the little settings here that we can play around with um, until we go down here and actually hit save. Now if I click this drop down arrow here, you'll see I get a save, which means it'll save right on top of the original image, okay? Or I can do save a copy. So I'm gonna click save a copy. And that means that there's two pictures now, okay? So now there's two pictures, there's one like that, and there's one like the other as well. Okay, now we're back dealing with our, 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 our section up here. Now, if we actually, I'm not gonna click this because that's gonna take me to a whole new menu. I'm gonna go ahead and keep talking about our other sections over here. So I'm gonna deal with the edit and create in just a minute. So let's go ahead and let's click where it says share. Now, if you actually have your email set up in Windows uh, 10, you click this and it'll bring up the mail app and allow you to send your pictures that way. Used to, this actually had a Facebook app on here and I guess they've gotten rid of that for certain reasons, but one easy thing to do is to do a copy, uh, copy file, copy paste, and then I can paste the picture. Let's see, so I hit copy, and I'll open up a PowerPoint real quick for my example. If I go here and I just go and I am the, go up here and I click paste, there's my picture, okay? So using the copy paste makes it very easy to put pictures wherever you want them to be. Okay. No, don't save. And that's just by clicking share and then it says copy file. Okay. And I should be, let me make sure here before I give that example. It's thinking about, ah, here we go. Okay, so let me show you this. So if I actually pulled up Okay, I got it. If I actually pulled up, let's say Gmail, I'm gonna send someone an email, I can click here and then do the right click copy paste, which is the easiest way because I don't think they have a paste here. Can I do a paste here? Because I usually do the right click. Yeah, there's my paste and all that too. Let me 
Let's see if that works. Yeah, I'm not sure. But I do know the right click. Ah, it worked a second ago. Hang on. <laughs> Copy. And it should still do it in the menu. There we go. There you go. And then we have our picture right there and we're emailing it to somebody. So it's not really that big a deal uh, stepping out to be able to do that. Yeah, it's going to, it takes it a second to load because it is a big picture. Okay. And then there's my picture and my email. Okay. I didn't have to fight to try to find it or anything like that. So the share button, you may have to use the copy paste. Um, if you don't have mail set up, okay? Okay, so let's go ahead to our next part here. Let's talk about our print, and then we'll talk about our three buttons, and then we'll talk about our editing and creating, okay? So let's click print. Now, I will tell you this. I do kind of recommend um, if you are going to print something, it really is easiest uh, to basically put your files on a flash drive, um, I will tell you if your camera is holding a lot of pictures, I've had it where I do go to the kiosk machine, let's say Walmart, Target, uh, CVS, Walgreens, someplace like that. And when I plug it in, the machine takes a long time to load, okay? Uh, because maybe you have so many pictures on your, on your phone um, more than you would just someplace else. So to save a little bit of time i think next time i would go ahead and put the files like on a flash drive or put them on an sd card uh, the ones i specifically wanted to print uh, just so to save a little bit of time but if not it could take a little as long as you have a little bit of patience realize if you've got like thousand pictures you know or or something like 30 60 gigs of pictures and videos on your um, cell phone maybe um, may want to pre-copy your stuff and, and do it that way. So I do recommend the CVS, Walgreens, and all them. Um, it may be a little bit easier than printing something at home. It depends on what you want to do. But these, these are the options of printing at home. Okay. So right now we're not actually connected to a printer. So right now it actually won't give us that um, option. But we look here, we can actually see that here's my main picture here. We can talk about what the paper size is. It's going to print it as landscape. And this is actually set up for a, a piece of paper that has been cut to a five by seven. Okay. Now let's look at our other options on here. You could want it just to print it. There's full page right there. Okay. Here's also eight by 10 and then four by six. And if we get into smaller, like wallet size or something, there you go right there. Now, the big thing is you may want to tell it, where is it on here? Okay, that's just the different types of paper and everything like that. So if I go back, I hit OK, and there it is right there. Now, one thing you may want to do if there's specific things, um, what you may want is to basically set it up. So if let's say you go to the store, you get some Avery paper, it'll have a special number in it. And if you're printing the pictures using Word or even PowerPoint, all you really need to do is set it up and put those codes in. Um, it'll even let you print from uh, Google, uh, the Google Docs as well. So the other thing you can do is under the other printer settings you can actually edit since we're not connected to a printer remember I can actually go in here change it to black and white or grayscale if I wanted to um, or change the print quality as well okay so that's kind of printing at home let's look at our three dots over here and see what our options are well here's our slide show that will just be this one slide here's also a save as if you did want to save this picture someplace else, might want to do save as. Um, remember, just like in our class last uh, yesterday, our our when our cameras take pictures, do you realize they call it image or picture, and then it's a bunch of numbers. Okay, so it may or may not be 
something that's rememberable to you. If you do the save as here, you can call it whatever you want and then you'll know where it is. This is an easy way to export uh, kind of a flash drive. So if I had a flash drive plugged in, I could click down here, give it a new name if I wanted to, and then just hit save. And then I know I've saved it to the flash drive uh, pretty quickly. Let's talk about our next size. This is if we want to resize our photo. If it needs to be a certain size, certain definition de um, defined. Uh, one of the things we'll be talking about tomorrow when we do our GIMP editor, that's one of the things is we'll be able to tell the pixel by pixel. Uh, you may for a project, you may for, I don't know, something you're going to print, uh, maybe even the virtual scrapbook, you want to make sure it's the pixel by pixel, uh, the right definition, uh, then we can actually change it here or we'll actually change it in the GIMP um, software as well, which we'll talk about tomorrow. Here's the copyright here, just as I did the share, it's going to copy the picture, paste it in most places that you want a picture, and then you're not fumbling for it on the computer somewhere, okay? Now this is a big one right here. Again, we're dealing with lots and lots of folders. Why, why am I talking about this? Okay, so the reason I'm talking about this is sometimes it's hard to find our pictures um, once we have them on our computer, okay? Now, of course, we know by using our organizer, we know what our photo's name is, okay? At any time, you could use the search here and type in, start typing that number in, and it'll pop up like 4609. And look, it even gives me a preview of it right there. So I didn't have to type in the IMG. It'll pull it up, and you could click that, and it'll open it up in the previewer, okay? Now, the problem is if you want to do it like in the editor, I got to figure out what folder it's in, and I'm going to show you how to 100% know where all that stuff is. But it's a lot easier to do this. So I find the picture, I open the picture, I click the three dots, I can do open with. So if there's a certain program I want to open it in, even if it's the GIMP program, I can make it do this very easily. Click GIMP, hit open. I don't have to fumble with trying to the name of the file. I don't have to try to figure out where it is. Makes it very easy uh, to, to choose the open with, okay? All right, now, this is, and uh, I, I don't really mess around with this too much, but this actually, have you ever wanted to change, and a lot of people do want to do this, they want to change their background wallpaper to let's say a family photo or even the lock screen Windows 10, I think, does a pretty good job giving us different um, pictures. Um, I'd say once a month or so. It depends on what they're what they're doing, but it actually will change and giving us different pictures to look at. But if you want to make it your own lock-in picture or set the background picture or something else, uh, you can do that very easily with this. Click there, click set as background, and boom, this will be your background of your computer okay now here's a big one here let's go to file info file info will actually tell us a lot of information okay and if you are using uh, I believe this program does it I know the Google one does it that we'll talk about in a minute if your phone of course is turned on with GPS you take a picture it can actually tell you the location of where you took the picture okay so since I hit info, very easily it tells us the date and the time. And I don't know why it doesn't say the size, that's kind of odd. But anyway, it tells the dimensions and it also tells what kind of f-stop you had it set at, the aperture, um, what it was set at, the ISO, some actual information, and what pit camera did you use. And it's kind of funny because uh, here we are. This is a, there it is, a Canon a PowerShot SX30. So it does actually know what camera I took this picture with, okay? Then we get down here, we actually get information about where is this file. So this file is actually located on C drive with this folder under pictures. 
and Google Photos uh, folder is where this picture is located. So again, if you are having problems trying to figure out where files are, either you can use this, find the picture, and do it that way, or you can actually have it set up here. And this actually has a button I can click, and it will automatically open up in the File Explorer. I might open up in the File Explorer, and that's where our picture is listed. Okay. So again, that allows me to do anything I want to with it. Makes it easier to find a picture, uh, less clicking, more visual. So I'll hit X to close that. Okay, now if we go down to where it says settings, let's look at the settings of our app. Now, you may or may not use the cloud One, OneDrive service. This is where you can turn it on, turn it off. This is also where you can add different sources. Like, like I said, if you have a folder that's outside of the, the typical pictures folder, I have a pictures folder in a different folder. Uh, you can add it here. You can turn OneDrive on and off and a few other settings in here I don't think I really need to go into. Talks about the preview, video, yeah. Different things like that. So you don't really need to know all of those, just kind of leave them at the default. All right, now, whoop, what do I do? There we go. So now let's go ahead and let's click Edit and Create. And there's a little drop down here too, it gives us some other options. <laughs> it's creating a video with music and also editing it with 3D Paint. I won't get into that, but the the paint now is in 3D. I think it's more of a fun thing uh, for you know for little bits to do or kids to do because you can also draw and make uh, 3D characters and stuff as well on top of your pictures. So let's go ahead and I'm going to hit just click here. It says Edit and Create. I'm going to click Edit. Now the first thing that pops up is our cropping because it thinks that's what we wanted to do. But we have some other options here. What about filters? Let's click filters. Now I may not keep all of these, but I'm going to kind of play around with it a minute. Ooh, black and white. I don't know if you'd ever have should ever have a sunset that's black and white. Let's click here where it says auto enhance. Ooh, is that better? What you think? And I can control the uh, the strength of that as well. I don't know. I think I'll undo that. So here's the undo button here near the top. All right, let's click the individual. Scroll down a little bit. Did you see one you liked? Kind of changes the atmosphere a little bit, doesn't it? Okay, I'm going to do undo because I'm not really sure if I like those. Now I can change the intensity of the filter here. So if I click here, I still have some options. Okay. Now let's go up here and let's click where it says adjust. Now filters are pre-made and adjust basically is us changing what we believe. Want it to be lighter, want it to be darker. Want to add more color to it, less color to it. So if I hit undo, so I just want it to be a little bit less color. Not completely black and white, but maybe just a little bit. How about that? So there's the original. Or add more color to something make it look richer I think the richness kind of kind of like that now this is a picture if you think it's too dark too light I will warn you that one of the issues with that is um, it may be your your laptop screen may be really bright uh, so just be aware of that before you print something to maybe look at it um, 
on a different device and that's a good idea all right here's our clarity to kind of make it sharp or, or more blurry so that's more blurry sharper vignette usually this kind of does like a circle it's almost like its own frame but it kind of zero ends on one uh, part uh, yeah one part okay now what is red eye red eye tries to reduce someone's red eye it's happened you click here and you basically you can tap some I, I don't think we'll tell much of a difference here you can tap a little bit and all it really does is it takes red away and it kind of makes it grayscale and that's the way it tries to fix um, red eye okay and you may want to do where you zoom in on someone a lot and try to fix their red eye okay So there are ways to fix a red eye, but we're not sure. Depends on the picture. I've seen pictures where the red eye was so bad that it actually went outside the pupil of the person. And even if you made their eyes kind of darker or gray or whatever, try to take the, the color away, um, it still looked pretty bad. Now this kind of blurs a little bit. It's kind of like a healing tool. I zoom in, I zoom in. Oh, can I turn it, okay, how do I get it around? It should tell something, let's see. Yeah, it's trying to do kind of what we'll talk about tomorrow, kind of a spot fix. So it's kind of interesting. You can tell it has changed some stuff. So let's say you want to get rid of this for whatever reason. That actually worked pretty good. And there's before, there's before and there's after, before, after, okay. Okay, so again, you have a choice of save a copy, which is kind of what I recommend. And I'm gonna undo all my changes. do all so that's just kind of some of the basic editing that we can do okay now let's go ahead and let's talk about our next part we've talked about our photo editing we've talked about our zoom or share button we want to change the background to something else we tried to do the blemish we try to do save a copy and now let's go ahead and we're going to start talking about our Google Photos. Now, before we do that, I'm going to give you just a quick glimpse. I'm going to hit cancel. Quick glimpse of the video editor. But like I said, I'm not going to make it into a big, um, and let's see if I do. Beach pictures. Okay, so if I click add to, let's say new album, let's say beach. So a few album. So here are just some beach pictures. And it actually has made a little bit of a slideshow. And if I click slideshow, It'll show the pictures, but if I click watch or edit, it actually will pull up the video editor, okay? And that's the same video editor as if I had clicked where it says video projects, okay? But I'm just gonna be doing it this way. So let's go back to albums, click beach, and I'm gonna say um, 
we'll do watch to begin with. So this is what it is. It's randomly made it. And if I choose remix. You'll choose. It's try. It tries to get you to kind of get you started on your video slideshow. If I click edit, then it'll pull up the video editor. Okay. Now, if I just click video projects, this video editor will be completely blank. Like I said, I won't go into um, into this much. Just kind of know that there's lots of different options on here. We have a separate class for this now, so I won't take up um, this. So I can talk more about the photo editing uh, with the Google Photos. But just realize you can import any, any video from your PC. You can import stuff from your video collection. And even they'll let you do it from the web as well. So you basically drag your stuff down here to your storyboards. You can add different titles. And if I go to... Um, here, I, I don't want to do that. What do I want to do? I'll select this one and select, say... There we go. Okay, so this is what it looks like now. And I can change it to whatever I want. So I could say beach. Oh, I think this is on the 2017. I took this. Now it has already added the music. I usually add the music last especially for projects so you're not hearing the same music over over again now they have all kinds of different templates to use so you kind of get the gist of it kind of worked out neat I'll leave that one I think and you can adjust where you want it to be the title move around so it's, these are kind of pre-made themes so I won't say it limits you it just kind of controls what it's gonna look like you can also choose any background music that you want <laughs> cut the videos up and you can of course add videos here not just this do filters you can also add 3d effects um, so I'll show this and then we'll move on to our Google Photos okay you can move the the picture so they look like they're a little bit of more of an order so that would be an ending there this is just kind of a preview beach you're at the beach looking around the beach and then the sunset's coming and then there's a the sunset and then there's your final photo okay Let's go.
go ahead and let's get out of this and I'll go ahead and pull up our Google Photos and we'll talk about that unless anybody has any questions about that so we have our Windows organizer and then we have our organizer for Google as well so they're very similar so kind of our goal is to have things if you're going to back up something what you really want to do is you really want to have it in two places okay so you have it on um, hard drive your computer you also have it backed up to the cloud you have it on the backdrop backed up hard drive you also have it on that I've even had recently heard um, uh, someone that was very worried about their stuff being deleted and <laughs> Uh, believe it or not they are founding because some of the SD cards are getting so cheap technically you could take a bunch of pictures and if you say hey I want to save these and just don't remove the memory cards and just buy a new memory card I that I've had I know someone that that seems like it's a really easy solution for them even though I would still say you could get a, a external hard drive and it would hold so much more for so much cheaper and then keep using your memory cards over again but there you go right there everybody has a little bit of a, a choice so a lot of folks are not backing up their pictures to, to blu-ray or not blu-ray but dvds or cds anymore okay so let's talk about our photos and google backup this is a free online um, service from google okay unlimited storage high quality pictures great visual like I said keep it in two places what I do is I back up my pictures to my computer or I'll have it um, on the app on my phone and automatically back up but then before I do anything I always copy the pictures back to this computer so I can put it on a, an external hard drive so I have it in two places big features are syncing a backup from a mobile, mobile device iPhone and Android app only you can see the pictures unless you uh, share them with other people I'll show that as well you can actually share pictures with people and when you don't want to share pictures anymore you can turn the sharing off the only thing I'll get a question about that in the class is basically what someone will say um, does that mean I can send a picture to someone go yeah it goes well, can they make a copy of that picture and I go of course they can make a copy of it anything that's on a computer screen can be copied okay and that's just kind of a note uh, to anybody out there <laughs> anything that's that comes up on a computer screen a cell phone screen it of course can be copied okay so uh, also a neat thing it has is a Google um, a photo assistant so it'll take pictures and make little slideshows um, automatically too, which is pretty fun. And it will allow you to do some basic photo editing, cropping, adjusting light, uh, things like that. And then we'll actually look at rescuing our old photos that are maybe in a storage box somewhere in the attic. And let me go ahead and pull that up. So here's our Google Photos. I won't scroll down because these are my, my personal photos and stuff for my family and stuff. But we have a nice bunch of pictures of a nice plant. Isn't it a pretty plant? So if I scroll down here, as you can see, I can keep scrolling. I could click here and it'll automatically pull up the pictures and show me all these pictures, you know, throughout time. One thing that's really cool is that I can actually, oh, I dropped something. I can actually show you where not only when I took the pictures using my cell phone it actually you can see where the pictures are still loaded up on the the app on my phone there's a picture of the plant right there all I had to do is I used my cell phone took some pictures and then I opened up the Google Photos app and I connected to Wi-Fi now the reason I have it set for that is so it doesn't use my cell phone data to upload pictures. You can turn that off if you want to. I do recommend it. Um, so anytime it uploads videos or pictures from my cell phone to um, Google, I have to remember to connect. I have to connect to the Wi-Fi. The only big drawback is 
for the auto backup is you have to make sure that the app is open in the background. Okay, so if you reboot your phone, you may say, hey, I need to open up the Google Photos app. Um, but if you're viewing pictures, you know, constantly looking at old pictures, you know, every few days or whatever, it shouldn't be really a big deal even to remember to do that. And then just connect your phone to Wi-Fi uh, so all your stuff gets backed up. One of the big things, features about the app uh, for the phone is that you can actually, and I have it on my list here, don't I? Anyway, it'll back up the pictures, but also there's a feature with the, with the device that you can actually choose. Let me show you. It'll actually show right here. It'll pop up and say, um, see if I can get it. <laughs> it's too bright, I guess. It's too bright. Okay, hold on. If I turn my light off, we should be able to do that then. There we go, okay. All right, still a little, little bright. Anyway, in the settings, I can actually go in there. Do you see where it says backup complete? And it says library, it's this section right here. It says um, all these items uh, to delete from this device. This will give you um, more space on your on your device. So if you're running out of space on your device, I can actually type it, t um, tap here. It'll actually delete the photos. Okay, it will actually delete the photos that are uh, been backed up to Google. Okay, from the device. So it'll only delete pictures it knows it's backed up, which is an absolute um, necessity, I guess you could say. Uh, the big reason about that is that is that uh, you do that, you know that it's backed up. They even had a commercial a while back, someone jumping in the pool is like, oh no, my cell phone's still in my pocket. And he goes, oh no, oh, it's okay, I got Google Photos because it backs up all my pictures. Well, you know, my photo, but my, at least I'll get, I'll, I've rescued my photos, okay? So let's look at Google Photos a little bit. And like I said, you can scroll down here and it'll organize it. The big thing, of course, is if you use the app back up to the cloud, then someone says, hey, how was your trip last year? And you go, oh, I haven't shown you anything from pictures last year. And you can pull it up, tap, and it'll say actually um, right there, you know, where the pictures are, okay? <laughs> hey, Jane, how are you? Welcome back, welcome back. Okay, so we also have albums that we can set up here as well. These will be independent from the ones in Windows. Uh, we make with the Windows Photo app. I wish they synchronized, but they don't. Um, uh, if you, the interesting thing is, uh, if you remember, people really like the Google Picasso's, Picasso software. Uh, they discontinued that, and they put that whole team on doing all the online stuff. So. A lot of the same features are, are right here as well. So if I wanted to, I could actually click our little plant here. And I find, once I select something, it'll click up here. I can click share. Basically just type in someone's email address and it'll send them a link and they can click it. It'll even let me post it to Facebook. Uh, they can click it and view it. Now remember, I can control the share, what I share later. So we'll talk about that. But I actually want to click the add. And it says, you want to create an album? Sure. Do you want to create a collage? Ooh, a collage. We'll talk about that in a second. You want to create an animation? Ooh, an animation. Ooh, a share album? Ooh, a share album. Mm, let's just make an album right now. Uh, how about we call it a uh, plant? It's a plant. So basically, here's our pictures, okay, for our plant. Now, let's talk about editing our pictures a little bit. Uh, let's add more. Let's see. Let's add text. And also, a lot of these will have the GPS location on it when you upload a picture. Where is that? Oh, sort photos. 
Okay, so basically if I click a picture, uh, well, I'm not selecting. Oh, I'm in edit mode. Hold on. Okay, I've, I've edited it. Let's look at albums. We'll look at my plant. So here's my plant, and if I click my plant, then I can go up here and look at our editor, okay? This is our editor right here. Um, well, we'll just kind of walk through this. So again, here's my share, here's my editor, and does this start to look familiar? Oh, I'll get out of the way, so I'm, I don't want to be in the way. This should start to look familiar. So I can actually ch add a filter to my little plant here. Very green, so I don't know if you can really see much going on here. But uh, these are filters, just like we did the sunset. Let's see, and I can subtract or add. Let's see. Got a little bit of a dusty black and white. Okay, we'll we'll do that. We didn't really do that before. I want one that I can barely, okay, that gives it a little bit of a harsh tone on it. I don't really know if I like that too much. I just want a little bit less, let's see, or auto. Okay, we'll do the auto because the auto just kind of greens it up a little bit. Okay, so those changes have taken effect, okay. Now look at this, I can actually click and hold and it'll compare the two, which is kind of neat. We also have where it says undo edit as well. There's your zoom and I can click done as well. Now let's go ahead and click this next one. This will actually allow us to change the lighting. Look familiar, look familiar, okay. There's also controlling the color. So let's make it just kind of a little bit dusty with color. There we go, kind of a, um, because the green is so bright, we'll just make it so it's a little bit of green. Okay, so it's pop. Not sure what pop does. Oh, it makes it the, the round a little bit harder. And you see there's a whole bunch of different choices here. Whole bunch of different choices here. Here's the exposure. Highlight, shadows, little, little more options than we had with the other program, isn't it? All right, now here's our rotation if we needed to. We can rotate the picture. That might actually work pretty good because our, our plant is a little bit crooked, isn't it? I actually kind of like that better. It looks a little bit of an angle. I'm gonna hit done. Now, if you need to, Here's your aspect ratios again, square, wide. I'll hit done. And if I hover, I'll hit done here. And look, there's our plant. Now, let's talk about our other, other section here. Here's your info. Talk about when it was taken, what's the file name, okay. It was taken by iPhone what the f-stop was, what the aperture was, and all kinds of good stuff. And there's your GPS location. I can star the picture, and let's see our other options here. We can view the slideshow, and I can actually download the picture as well, download the original, add to an album, share album, rotate, order canvas prints. Now, I will tell you the online part of this is actually connected up with uh, services like CVS and, and Walmart and different ones like that. You choose which one you want. Google has, isn't actually printing anything, okay? Uses an album cover, move from album, or move to trash, okay? So let's click the back button. And now, that, now we actually have our plant album and it actually has given me a suggestion <laughs> down here with our photo books and everything. Our canvas, we'll talk more about our virtual scratch, uh, uh, virtual um, scrapbooks, then our virtual scrapbook class. Okay. So I'm going to do the, hang on, let me make sure I'm on track here. 
Okay, good. So we're still on track with our program. So we talked about editing our stuff. Now let's talk about sharing it. Uh, that's not what I want. I want to. Okay, so this is about our sharing with anyone. Invite a person to share. Share one of the links to the photos and people that's out. Yes. I may add photos, select people, and pets. Hmm. Where is my. There's share, but I've already looked at that. What was the new thing I was going to do? Let's see if I go back to my photos. Oh, that was it. Oh, that's not it. Hold on. I want to add to the share album should be the same. Oh, there we go. That's what I want to do. I want to do the animation, do the collage thing. This is one of the things that the little administrator will do. Automatically, if it syncs, it's a bunch of pictures that are similar. <laughs> that's kind of neat. So if I want to add that, add to album plant. Perfect. All right. Oh, I got to select all those again. And I want to do a collage. Okay, two to nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hey. <laughs> it's funny because, of course, we have a bunch of pictures that all look the same. I should have some other collage options. I've played around with this once before. Huh, is that all I get? There's no other choices? Hmm, really? Okay, maybe that's why I've never played around with this. Huh, it's the only collage I get. Okay. Okay, I have a much better collage website to show. Okay, so we talked about that. We talked about our sharing. Now, if I choose album, and we choose our plant album, and we go up here and we click share, we can type in someone's name, okay? They'll actually show up here. They'll actually show up, and when we actually look back later, it actually will show the person's information here that we're sharing with them. Now, if we don't want that, we can actually right click, or where's my settings on here? We can actually come in here and change the, who we're sharing with. Come back here and then delete someone from the share, okay? So what does that mean? That means you can share something, which would be like a website link to them person views it and in a week month later you go well I don't want to share all my pictures anymore there you go what's the benefit of that one instead of emailing one thing to them they have a ton of stuff and I can actually keep adding to the album as well um, I don't think they get a notification if it's been updated or not but maybe you send them an email saying hey I added some more album for more pictures uh, to let's say the maybe you went on a trip with someone and you want to share some pictures with them and then you can say hey I added some more pictures to our trip um, on my camera because that was just from my cell phone before okay okay so 
Uh, the other thing is, let's talk about our utilities here. No, the, uh, where do I want to go? Oh, there's my little my little thing that mixes stuff together for us. Creates animations and all that. And there is no. Okay, I guess they've moved something around here. Okay, so how do you upload stuff that isn't on, on here? And usually Okay, what I was going to talk about was basically being able to use the program, but it looks like usually I have a thing over here that talks about the app and everything, and it doesn't want to show it. There's also a button that says Print Store, which we'll talk more about that in the other one as well. But if you want to hand upload things, you basically just go up here and say Upload from your computer. Okay, there it is. There it is. Okay. so. Sorry, they move stuff around on here. So what I did was at the main area, I click upload. It says from this computer. This is where you can do stuff by hand. You can choose this computer and then basically choose a folder and then tell it to upload that folder or that file. If you click upload and then choose um, download pictures and sync, this is a software program that you can actually install onto your Windows PC and you tell it a folder and it will upload that one folder. One of the problems with this is it syncs. Um, so if you do have a lot of pictures um, not uploaded, it'll start downloading them because it tries to synchronize. They've changed the way this app works. So do realize the best thing to do is actually have an empty folder, put pictures in there, run the program, and then it'll upload the pictures instead of having to trying to synchronize them. This also has links here to the Apple and the Apple um, App Store and also the Google Play Store as well to download uh, the app for it. Now I want to go ahead and show and I'm very excited because they've recently added the fun, the video back. There was actually an issue with the video I could only show the Australian version of it, which was kind of funny. This is called Photo Scan. This allows you to take pictures of, of old photos, even pictures that are even in a frame, and take them and very quickly add them to your cell phone library. And of course, in your, then of course, let Google Cloud upload the picture as well. The only negative things I've had about this is trying to figure out <laughs> how I should organize these picture based on date. But I think the easiest thing to do is to let the, the list go and just create an album that says old photos. I found out that's the easiest thing for me to do. And um, there you go. So it's a free program. It's a photo scan app. And I'll show you the little video and it'll kind of go through it pretty quickly. And you'll understand it very quickly as well. Once upon a time, before there were smartphones, people took real photos, printed on actual paper. Photos of siblings, of moms and dads, of birthday parties, of mullets, of grandma playing with dirt. Photos of the people that haunt your house, and selfies, before they were called selfies. These fragile pieces of paper are your memories. They're your family. They're your history. They're your regrets. So it's a good thing all those precious memories are safely backed up and perfectly organized in a nope. They're in a box in the attic, which is like the 87th best place they could be. <laughs> get, get. Maybe it's time to get out the gigantic flatbed scanner, find the right cord, download the driver, and bam. Photo saved forever. And bam. Wouldn't it be great if there was like a technology that was kind of like a mini scanner, like a handheld? Oh, hello. With the photo scan app, just hold your phone over any printed photo and go boop, 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 done. And you've got a high-res digital copy of the original without any glare. 
And it's not just a photo of a photo, because that looks like this. And if you have Google Photos, all your photos will be organized by face or place. It took you four and a half hours to get ready for this photo. The least you can do is spend a few seconds to scan it forever. Photos from the past, meet Scanner from the future. Photoscan by Google Photos. So basically it merges four pictures together. It basically merges four pictures together so that you can have the four and it puts it so it won't have any glare or anything like that. It makes one picture glare free. So let's say if you take a picture of a picture, it looks like this without a, using a, long, a big flatbed scanner. And if you use this because it does four different angles, usually the glare is gone. Okay. So do realize that it's a big benefit with this. And it merging it together and of course it being a free app and then they kind of plug uh, using the Google Photos. So they're kind of hoping that it'll create a whole area where you're uploading your pictures, you're able to get old photos. And a big thing about taking this with the old photos is you can actually share maybe with the, someone that's younger if you printed it up like in a virtual scrapbook or something. Instead of it being a picture that, oh, you can't touch that picture because it's old, scan it. And then you can print it and you can just give it to family members saying, hey, this is your grandparents or something like that. Great grandparents. And it's a copy of a copy so they can actually hold it, keep it, you know, as a souvenir for themselves if they want to. And, you know, it's theirs because, uh, you know, having a copy of one thing and then maybe that being destroyed in some way is not a good idea. So having it this way, scanning it, even sending it to them virtually, uh, you know, Allows them to have the information and have it and be able to share with others as well. Okay, so any questions about that? We're starting to get a little bit close to the end of class here. Let's talk about uh, a really neat collage software. And I'll kind of play around with that a little bit too. Oh, this is actually a website. It's called photocollage.com. And the, the reason I kind of bring this up is because we I've been doing this class so long that we used to have the Google uh, Picasa, which people really liked. Um, it did organize stuff similar to the Google Photos. I'm glad that Microsoft has stepped up and made something like Google Photos again because we didn't really have much of anything. I'll show you another software program that is similar. Um, that's free and it does have some different options as well. But the big thing is it would have a um, collage maker. And I actually used it um, a few times to make collages for family members. It's very cheap to do this, what I'm about to do, get it printed on an eight by 10 and you give it to them. You can even get a cheap frame at the dollar store or someplace like that. Give it to them and it's a real keepsake that they'll, they'll keep forever, okay? And it really doesn't take that much time. So. Let's go ahead and let's get started. Let's see. Oh, do I have to turn off? Okay. All right, so let me see. So here's our templates that we can choose. We basically import our pictures or upload them and it'll immediately put it in these special templates. I really like these and make it look like it's the old Polaroids. Um, younger generation now is coming up. They think the Polaroids are actually pretty cool because, um, you know, it's an instant picture. Even though you can see stuff on the phone, being able to make, a, your, make your pictures into a decorative piece um, using, you know, just some, I've seen just some string and some, uh, uh, the, I can't even think of it, pin, pin clips uh, and uh, making a real statement with just a bunch of pictures that have been printed. Okay, so I think I'll kind of play around. To another, oh, I said this one, we'll do that one. And let me upload my pictures. I think they're telling me I, I they don't want me to do anything because I don't have a blocker on there. There we go. So I upload some pictures. These are some pictures 
from, let's say, okay, I think we'll just do four today. So these are just pictures from like a golf, uh, golf uh, lesson camp. And if I take the picture, well, shoot. Okay, so I gotta hit the, I gotta upload my pictures and then do the template. Okay. So you could do this since it's just four. It kind of has it already. Uh, some really neat things. You can choose a different background, of course. Let's see. That one's kind of interesting. Guess that's one made for two. So what do I do with this then in that template? Okay, so I'm gonna choose a template that I know has four on it. So let's see. I'll do this one. There we go. So everything's in a kind of a nice, you know, way. So you can spend some time doing this, and it really is pretty robust. Let's see if I can make that wider. There we go. That's perfect. And if you have ones like this and you want to change the order, it'll let you do that. See? So I can drag this one up here and this one here. And you can mess around with the turning them. And if you click on them, you can resize them. And of course we have our, our turning Where's my, where's, where's the thing on there? Yeah, so at the very top here, if you grab that, you can actually rotate it a little bit. So if you want it to be rotated a different way. And of course, we can make the background anything we want as well. It's very robust compared to a lot of stuff, trust me. Where's my background on here? Swap photos, stickers. <laughs> Where's my background? Set background. There we go. Oh, that's kind of neat. Got some pre-made ones. So if you ever wanted to do one of those where all the pictures are like in the separate little sections and you go, how can I do that? Well, you can actually get it pre-done. Well, then how does that work with the pictures? I guess you'd have to move the pictures in the right place. But anyway, I think I'll change that. Let's see. Okay, that looks kind of neat. And that kind of fits in. It's kind of like you're putting pinning the pictures on the wall. See, it looked pretty good. Okay. So get, you know, you can have more than this and then they have a nice little collage. You can print it out eight by 10 because it lets you click here and you can save your image. And they don't, they don't, this website doesn't make you run through a bunch of different hoops, which is nice. Some websites that do. So we can only email you the picture or something like that. And you're like, what? Email me the picture. Yeah, I've used this a lot. I like it. See, and there's my real JPEG picture right there, and I didn't have to do anything else. And then you can, you know, put on a little SD card, go get it printed, and then boom, you've got your nice keepsake. Okay. And that's photocollage.com. And let's talk, go back to our other part here. Now for tomorrow, and I'll get you ready for tomorrow. Tomorrow or advanced. Oh, oh, I, before I talk about that, I wanted to show you, and I may actually add that to a handout. Give me one second. This is a different viewer that I've kind of played around with. Uh, lately, it is free, and where is it? There it is. 
It is free. It's uh, called XN View NP. And one of the things is it does kind of have a, a it's a photo viewer. It has a little bit of editing in it as well. I'll show you some of the, the screenshots here. So, but it's not as visually pleasing, I guess you'd say, as um, the, the photos that we've been working with. Of course, it doesn't have a video editor, you know, part of it. But it's free. They have a premium version, but it's free to download for um, just personal use and stuff. So don't let that scare you talking about money there. But it works pretty good. Can I, is there more screenshots? Yeah. One of the things I really like about it is that you can actually add categories to your images. And it's kind of like adding, uh, excuse me, you can add labels to your images. And it does categories, but you can label them so you could keep a picture anywhere and actually label it like uh, the beach instead of having to set up separate albums if you just want the picture to be kind of by itself. And once you set up the different um, sections, it's as easy as clicking on a picture and then just check in the box once you've already made the name. And then if you do the search later and you just say beach, it'll pull up all the pictures that are of the beach. It does have a um, way that you can view the timeline of all your pictures together. Um, so that's kind of nice. But it's not as easy to use, but some people, they'll, they want a learning curve because they want more, um, more options. And this has a lot of options in it. Okay, makes it pretty easy to use, zooming, and it gives you a whole lot more detail. And, you know, it's a little bit extra, a little extra thing that you may want some more information about. And again, as long as you're, you know, just having your pictures in the pictures folder, whatever folder, you can use this and the Microsoft Photos as well. It doesn't matter. They don't conflict with each other in any way. Okay. Uh, they have a lighter version, which is kind of classic. They have some other stuff on here too, resizing, all that. But it's just this one that it's been using. And it'll talk about cost, but it doesn't cost anything. Thumbnail view, full screen view. Has some basic editing that you can do with it as well. And uh, I don't know. It's just kind of different. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and let's look at the GIMP software that we're gonna be using tomorrow, okay? So this is GIMP, and I'll have the files that you can download, and I'll put them in the, the chat to download those tomorrow. We're also gonna be dealing with layers as well. This is a free program, so I kinda recommend you go ahead and have this installed um, on your computer, there is a, let me see here. So basically you click there where it says directly and it'll install it for you, okay? You'll have that on your computer and then you can kind of follow along with everything that we do tomorrow. GIMP is like a Photoshop-like editing uh, program. It has a lot of the same features and of course the big, our big focus is to try to, to do what most people say, hey, I've got a little bit of basic um, information you know, a lot, a little bit of basic things I can do with the lighting and everything and cropping. But I want to go beyond that. I want to get into uh, people say I want to Photoshop that picture, get rid of blemishes. Somebody has something in their teeth for some reason. Um, you want to be able to fix that. Where's my screenshots? I usually have uh, screenshots in here to show, but I don't see where I see any screenshots. They do have tutorial uh, section which helps out with that. Okay, here's some kind of some screenshots here where I could actually pull it up real quick. Okay, so it's loading.
So this is GIMP, and of course we're going to cover this all tomorrow, doing our editing, working with our layers and everything. So come join me for that. It'll be a lot of fun. It'll draw a little and stuff. <laughs> we'll talk about some of the new features, some of the things that they've changed on here. I'm not a huge fan of. There you go. So, see you tomorrow in working with that, okay? All right, so I hope you've enjoyed class. Let's talk about some of the things that we talked about today. We talked about what we needed to get our memory card, our photos off our photos and videos off our memory cards and stuff. We also covered getting around Windows 10 Photos app. We talked about importing our photos and videos, uh, starting a slideshow, uh, creating albums, editing photos, some basic editing, sharing and editing our photos, also using the uh, photo scan app to scan some old photos that we have on our computer. We talked about printing, uploading to Google uh, photos and web albums, and it's just an excellent program to use. We talked about some recommended software too. So, any final questions? <laughs> okay, so I'll go ahead and talk about some of the other classes that we have coming up and for the rest of the month and then we'll wrap class up okay so tomorrow we're doing chess 101 at 11 o'clock so come join me for that and like I've said we're doing our advanced photo editing and layers so we'll learn about layers and masking and all that kind of good stuff and here are our here is our schedule for the entire month. These videos are still up and available on our YouTube channel. And next week we're going to be doing our, our creating video editing basics, which we're going to cover the Microsoft Photos uh, app more in detail, more focused on our video. We'll walk through our video editing a little bit. We'll make a slideshow, uh, create a video, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Hopefully that'll kind of Get you started on your brainstorming on any kind of project that you're working on. And also next week on Tuesday, we'll be doing uh, cutting the cable basics, okay, on the on Wednesday. So, I mean, excuse me, on, yeah, on Wednesday. And then on Thursday, we'll actually have it added to the schedule. We're going to be doing another Raspberry Pi Computing Projects. Uh, live at 11 o'clock on the first and then we're going to be doing a library resources and apps class and the big focus is going to be on the new Libby um, app that we have coming out that our audio books our e-audio books and our e-books are going to be switching over to okay so come join me for that at 2 30 and we'll have our full month schedule uh, coming out then at next month just a reminder, our libraries are open with limited services and hours. Our curbside holds pickup is available. Um, you can go to gchrl.org for more details or call into the library with questions Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Don't forget to like us on Facebook so you'll be up to date and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we're still trying to reach our goal of getting 100 YouTube subscribers to our YouTube channel so that we can get our own YouTube address. To find our, our, our videos right now, you go to YouTube and search GCHRL uh, videos and it'll pop right up. Okay, that does it for me. I look forward to seeing everybody tomorrow morning in the chess class or 2.30 at our video editing class. So come join me for that.
<laughs> okay, have a great day. Go outside, get a little exercise, and stay safe. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>